can you talk about who started the helicopter service when it was started and uh, the motivation behind the whole thing? Sure. Um, 1982, November of 1982 is when this program started. We were the third in the state, but it was still pretty new. And uh, the reason that we got our program started is because of the vision and the, the foresight of Dr. Frank Mitchell, who was a trauma surgeon at University Hospital for many, many years. He was a surgeon in the military, and this is post-World War II, around the Korean War era, and he saw a lot of soldiers that were brought in uh, wounded, and saw firsthand that if they were able to get from the field to an operating room quickly, that lives were saved. The primary purpose uh, being that uh, they needed to get the bleeding stopped. So he and a bunch of his cohorts determined that if this worked so well in the military, and by that time it was determined that it really it really was working, why wouldn't it work in the civilian world? So Dr. Mitchell uh, established a trial program with Highway Patrol pre-1982, and it worked so well that it was determined that we should have a permanent aircraft at University Hospital. So, Kyle, I'll start with you today. Um, how many helicopters are in the Staff of Life's helicopter service and where are they located? Uh, we have three in the in the program. One based here at the University, Staff 1, Staff 2, based on Lake Regional Hospital in Osage Beach. And Staff 3 is located in Lamont, Missouri, um, over by between Sedalia and Whiteman Air Force Base. How long does it take to get like from the lake up to Columbia, Columbia Jeff City, some of the areas around here? Uh, from the lake to uh, Columbia is about a 30 minute flight uh, based on the winds of course and Jeff City is uh, just about right in the middle of that, so about 15 minutes. And who owns the helicopters and the, who provides the medical uh, staffing? Uh, we are, I work for Air Methods Corporation out of Inglewood, Colorado. We're contracted with the university. We, um, and in the medical crew, the nurse and the medics are employed by the university hospital. So you guys provide both inter-facility and scene flights. Can you talk about the challenges of a scene flight and the things that you guys need to take into account? Uh, and what makes them different from an inter-facility flight? Uh, sure, um, pre pretty much um, kind of the unknown on what uh, what the landing zone is going to be like. Uh, we get information from the uh, volunteer fire departments uh, that are throughout the, the state. They do get uh, landing zone training, so they uh, are knowledgeable about how to set up a, a, a landing zone for us and how to, how to communicate with us once we get there to tell us what the obstacles and hazards are. Um, and then that, that's pretty much it. And um, as far as the difference between the sea flight and uh, an inner hospital transfer, which uh, in our hospital transfers, we uh, kind of already know what the hazards are uh, in the hospital helipads. Uh, so that's the big difference. Kyle, what's the best part about being a, a pilot with a medical helicopter service? Uh, well, if you ask any pilot, they're probably going to say it's uh, flying because we love to fly. Um, but the uh, oh, with a medical service is it's, it's just an added bonus that we know that we're out there um, uh, doing our part to to help uh, to help people that are in need. How has the helicopter service and just in general medical helicopters, how they evolved in the uh, 35 years since Dr. Mitchell started the program in the early 80s? Yeah, great question. So when we started, it was a, it was a one pilot, one nurse deal uh, pretty much across the country. So you can imagine um, one nurse trying to deliver care that now two people do. Uh, so that was, I think, one of the biggest changes over the years that we added a paramedic, which is absolutely the best blend that you can get. The nurse brings uh, emergency room and ICU perspectives to patient care, where the paramedic provides a field perspective. So these two working together, we've got it covered. Um, in the beginning, I think we were similar to just a flying ambulance. We carried much of the same equipment that ambulances did, and what we offered primarily was speed. Uh, 
Uh, then we started to just advance in technology and the things that we put on board. And I felt like it, you know, mid year, probably in the 90s, uh, the early 2000s, we were more like a little flying ER. But today, because of the technology advancements, I believe that we're really a, uh, more like a flying ICU. We can deliver critical care in the air that just did not happen when this all started. So we're going to go out to the Columbia Airport, we're going to land, and we'll uh, show you guys what it looks like in the back of the helicopter uh, on our way back to University Hospital. So Kyle, if you want to talk about um, why we're going to go to the sterile cockpit here for a second. Yeah, we have a, uh, uh, a general rule as, it, when, as we're working as a crew whenever we're taking off and landing. Uh, Takeoff and landing uh, is the most critical part of, of our flight, uh, so we need to be uh, diligent on looking outside of the aircraft and talking as a crew only on the amount, only what we're uh, what we're looking at um, so that we're not distracted in uh, any other ways and that we can call out all the obstacles uh, that we can see and we do that all the way up into our cruise altitude uh, which normally doesn't take very long but it's, uh, those are the critical times and we're talking nothing about uh, what's happening uh, outside of the aircraft. Walk us through the capabilities of the medical care area of the, um, the helicopter here. Sure. So, uh, this is a cabin built for one patient. This is the litter that the patient would be on. Uh, the head of the patient right here, the feet obviously down there. Uh, we have pretty much access to the entire person if we need uh, to have it. But generally speaking, we have the patient packaged pretty well before we load them. Uh, Chris is in the airway seat. Uh, it's what we call the airway seat. So if during flight the patient has an emergency and requires an airway, then Chris is in good position to place that. Perfect. Um, what are some of the differentiators between uh, our helicopter and some of the other ones in the area? I think probably there, there are several things that set us apart from others, and one of them is the fact that we carry blood. Um, for years now, we've been carrying two units of O-negative blood on board every aircraft that we have, and this is a universal uh, donor. Anybody can receive O-negative. So uh, on this aircraft, we also carry plasma, which is extremely unique. That's a privilege that we have just because we're at the University of Missouri. So uh, blood absolutely saves lives. People that are hemorrhaging and don't have time, you know, that they're just bleeding out, they need to get to the operating room, we can help get them there and, and keep them alive until they get there. Uh, we also carry a little mini lab machine, I guess, for lack of a better way to describe it. This is called an EPOC, and we can take a sample of the patient's blood. Uh, we put a little stick with the blood, drop of blood in this machine and turn it on, and it does its magic, and then within, what would you say, Chris? Uh, uh, probably about a uh, minute and a half to two minutes. Uh, we'll get uh, all the pertinent lab information we need to guide our care, uh, EPG analysis, uh, electrolytes, uh, and then, of course, measuring their hemoglobin and hematocrit, which again guides all the cares and treatments uh, for somebody severely injured or uh, sick. Hey. I'm a tower staff once clear northwest. Is that on We have one runner for Jennifer. We'll see you next time. See you. Thanks. I, do, I think I will show you this ultrasound because this is something that I don't know of any other program in our area that's doing this, but this machine is an ultrasound machine and it actually gives us the ability to put a wand on a person's chest and we can tell if the lung is down and if 
we need to do something to bring the lung back up. Um, we can look at blood flow to the heart to determine if the heart's still beating. We can look at their inner organs, their um, spleen or their kidneys or whatever to determine if there's bleeding internally. So I think it's just another tool to help us determine what kind of care they need and then also to alert the hospital when we're coming in what, you know, they might need to be ready to go in the operating room. Puppy traffic staff one, about a mile and a half to the south and east. We'll be circling south, landing to the east at the University Hospital Columbia. Chris, do you want to talk about the jump bag? What uh, we do uh, yeah, our jump bag or red bag or primary bag. Uh, it's got many names, but it's got all of the kind of life-saving pertinent uh, instruments on board that uh, we need it, either at the bedside or uh, out in the field on the scene response. Uh, it's got our innovation equipment inside of it. Uh, some of the chest uh, decompression devices that Joan had mentioned, um, catheters uh, of different sizes, uh, just kind of all those uh, those life-saving measures for, uh, you know, your, your ABCs as they call them, so uh, anything to protect and save the airway, uh, help with breathing and uh, improve circulation. Justin, I want to point out the ventilator. This is an advanced ventilator that we use for patients that need help with their breathing, and so uh, if they, if we determine they're just not breathing well on their own, then like Chris was talking about, we put a breathing tube in, attaches to this tube, turn the ventilator on and put settings on it to give them the right amount of oxygen in the timing that they need it. It's a great tool to have. This is our cardiac monitor that we use to uh, determine what the patient's heart is doing, whether we need to give them some electricity to get them out of a lethal rhythm or to use a pacemaker to get the rhythm on a regular basis. Cool. Never mind, buckle. So uh, we're we are secure, yes. Zero cockpit time, so 